You have entered the command zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. Somewhere, Somewhere beyond the sea, Somewhere waiting for me, My lover stands on golden sands And watches the ships that go sailing. <laughs> A little vibrato, I like yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All righty. What's up, everybody? You're watching slash listening slash enjoying the beautiful auditory sounds of the Dulcet command. tones. The dulcet t- siren tones. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, of the Command Zone podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Jimmy Wong. How is it? It's Josh Lee Kwai, the OG team. We're back. OG, we're back. We're back. In the ocean. And singing. And singing, yeah. Um, Sorry for those that don't like it, and you're welcome for those that do. I mean, this time, they. I think we've converted the haters. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. That had to be one of our better ones. Yeah, if we keep the range low, I could do. I, we yeah. could see. Yeah, maybe that's it. No more falsetto. <laughs> yeah, <'cause> it's falsetto. <laughs> okay. Um, today we are doing a deck reveal. One of our favorite episodes to do because yep. brand new cards are coming your way, and we're going to talk about them. We're going to show them. We're also going to talk about the the price of the deck, the reprints, all this spicy stuff. And this one is called Deep Clue C. Yeah. So maybe you know Flutter. why we sang that song. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. A lot of exciting stuff. Murders at Karlov Manor, right around the corner. Looks really, really cool. Before we get into it, if you want to get any of these cards we're about to talk about, this pre-con, you want to pre-order anything from the set, cardkingdom.com slash command is the best place to go to get all your magic products, singles, anything at all. We love Card Kingdom because they have a huge inventory. So if you're looking mm-hmm. for a magic card, they've got it, whether it's sealed product or a single. It, like we said, you can pre-order MKM right now. But also, because they have that huge inventory and they are one single magic retailer, when you order your stuff... It all comes from one place. They put it in one package, and that package gets sent to you and arrives on your doorstep all at the same time. Nice. Yeah, the convenience of that is just, it's just hard to over-enunciate here. (laughs) Yeah, and also this time of year, there's a lot of weather going on, rain, snow, all kinds of stuff. I love dealing with professionals like Card Kingdom under those circumstances because they're going to package up your stuff in a way that's going to make sure that it gets, you know, when you unwrap the package, all your cards are still in really good shape because they do this all the time for thousands and thousands of orders across, you know, the country and the world, and they are professionals. So, again, cardkingdom.com slash command. We cannot recommend them highly enough. And when you get that brand-new pre-con, you want to sleeve it up in the sleeves that match, or maybe put it on the playmat that matches, or just a regular blue playmat with an island symbol on it. Yeah, perfect for this one. (laughs) Yeah, you can go to ultrapro.com slash command. That is our other sponsor for the show and Ultra Pro again every time the pre-cons come out it's almost guaranteed that they're going to have the play mats and the sleeves that are associated with that deck so if you're giving a gift in this holiday season or just a birthday a great way to really full out bling out the gift is by giving the play mat and the other parts that go along with it I know for a fact that if I received a gift like that for my first commander deck oh that would have really just made my day and really kept me with that deck and bring me into the game a little bit more so that immersion all those amazing accessories the products that we trust here at the command zone to our own products as well as our collections is found at ultrapro.com slash command they've got it all there and they also have uh, just amazing sales all the time holiday sales uh new year sales after holiday sales yeah. <laughs> just a sale because there's a sale <laughs> yeah and so a great way to get stuff on discount as well is by staying up to date with their newsletter ultrapro.com slash command we love it a bunch we're sure you will too yeah and of course the final way to support all of our content is directly if you go to patreon.com slash command zone all kinds of perks for our patrons uh, like getting to watch game nights and extra turns earlier than the general public we also have a discord that Jimmy myself Rachel our whole team really is on the discord quite often and then there's also exclusive content at certain tiers so we've got a whole show called turn talk that you might not even know exists but it does and it comes out (laughs) after every single extra turns episode and that is just bonus content you get for being part of our patreon yeah Uh, it's the players talking about the game through their plays you know why they did what they did after the game I found it to be really educational to watch those episodes myself so if you're interested in supporting our content joining our community patreon.com slash command zone we also shout out one lucky patron every single episode so this week's episode is dedicated Dedicated to to niall Niall hopkins Hopkins. niall you rock let's hop to it uh and one quick thing before we get into the deck reveal i know you're all anxious for it i'm sorry uh we want to say that we're going to be at magic on chicago yep so windy city yep windy city uh and the cold windy city because it's gonna be in february (laughs) february 23rd 24th and 25th is the mat the dates for the magic con now i want you to circle that february 23rd which is the friday on your calendar because that's the day that we are going to be there performing game nights live oh yeah yeah which 
Again, we are biased, but I do <laughs> honestly believe is the best part of the con. We have standing room only people screaming at the top of their lungs for live commander magic gameplay. It's, no, it's like nothing you've ever seen. We involve the crowd. You might even get pulled up on stage. Yeah. And this one's going to be turned up to 11 because oh. we have a very special guest. We have the professor from Tularean Community College as uh, one of the players in that game. It's his first ever trip to a magic con. Wow. This is something we've been trying to put together for a long, long time. So super exciting. It's going to be a ton of fun. Yeah. And you don't need anything additional outside of the badge for magic con to attend the show so all you have to do is just show up we say usually a little bit early maybe yeah. just attend the panel beforehand to make sure you get a seat and it's going to be a wild ride guaranteed yeah but circle that friday a lot of people show up and they come saturday sunday mm. if you can get that extra day and it's worth it for game night's life we promise because we hear from people all the time on like saturday sunday when's the show and we're like yeah, it already it happened. happened yeah yeah so try and get there on friday it's it's friday at 4 p.m so if you can get there a little earlier on friday we hope to see you there all okay. right. Let's All right. Do this. Yeah. Let's let's uh, dive in here. Dive in <laughs> yep. to I, deep I clue C. The precon. Uh, we are revealing this deck. It is a Bant clue tokens theme. Mm. Yeah, from Murders at Karlov Manor. A lot of investigating in this set, as you may have noticed. Yeah, it's um, a detective-based murder. You know, there's even a tie-in with Clue, the board game. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, So, of course, we are going to be doing an in-depth analysis of these cards later in the future budget upgrade episode that we usually do for the pre-cons. This video is just to show you what's in the product. So we're going to be talking about the new cards as well as listing off all of the reprints later on and also talking about um, the price and what the reprint value looks like as well on top of all that. But we're not going to go super in-depth on all the cards. We'll save that for a later video. Jimmy and I will try to resist the urge to evaluate every card, which we we do. Love to do. Well, sometimes we're good at resisting there, and sometimes we're not. We'll it's try. It's an itch. All and, right. Uh, and I want to say that um, a thing we started doing fairly recently that we didn't used to do is we mm-hmm. are going to list and show every single card in the deck. We're going to go through the highlights first, and at the end of this video, we will yeah. list off the remaining cards. So you will get to see every card in the deck. Yeah. Okay. So watch the video version. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you'll hear them. Uh, true, uh, true, true. Uh, on, the, on the audio version. Okay. Let's start off with. The lead singer of the deck, I guess the one that's the lead on, investigator. I yeah, guess this these time. Bo- these new boxes don't have the card on the front like they used to, but they do have one card on the back, and this is the one that shows. So I am assuming this is the one they're suggesting out of the box yeah. you run as your commander, which is not always the right one to do. But here it is. It's Morska, Undersea Sleuth. Ooh. It's a green, a white, and a blue. So three mana for a two-three legendary creature, Vidalkin Fish Detective. <laughs> Says you have no maximum hand size. At the beginning of your upkeep. Investigate. And investigate, remember, means create a clue token, and clue tokens are artifacts that say, pay two, sacrifice this artifact, draw a card. Okay. So at every upkeep, you make a clue. And then it says, whenever you draw your second card each turn, put two plus one plus one counters on Morska Undersea Sleuth. Okay. So each turn, it could be on someone else's turn, but usually it's the easiest by going to your turn, you make a clue, you draw a card for your turn. At some point, you crack the clue, that's your second card you've drawn that turn. Yeah, because if you're on somebody else's turn, you would have to crack two clues ostensibly. Or do a Ristic Study type thing or yeah. something, right? But on your turn, you always draw one card, so the second card's a lot easier to draw. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Morska's going to get big fast. <laughs> and threat of activation, too. You can swing in, and mm. if you have clues... You could crack them, so they have to assume that you will, which means they kind of have to calculate it as if it's plus, plus two, two, plus two, two more than it currently is, in yeah. which case it's very hard to block, and they won't. And then you go, cool, I'm not going to crack the clue because I want to cast other spells, yeah. but I still got in there because of threat of activation. Yeah, yeah, I like that a lot. Um, and this deck is probably trying to draw a lot of cards in other people's turns, and you've got green, white, and blue, so guaranteed you're going to be able to do that sort of thing. Most from the green and blue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry, White. I guess your Esper Sentinel will get you one there each time. All right, um, but this deck also has a backup legendary creature that you could run as the commander out of the box. Yeah, this one's really fun. It's Sophia, Dogged Detective. And the dogs, the dog part's going to come into play here. Yep. <laughs> one in Bant, so one green, white, and blue for a 3-4 legendary creature, Human Detective. When Sophia, Dogged Detective, enters the battlefield, create Tiny, a legendary 2-2 green dog detective creature token with Trample. It's kind of like Boo a little bit. (laughs) You can pay one mana and sacrifice an artifact token. So the creature you created is an artifact token. And it says put a plus one, plus one counter on each dog you control. And then whenever a dog you control deals combat damage to a player, create a food token, then investigate. So just tokens on tokens on tokens. Yeah, and it, it's, it wants dog creature types to be a theme of your deck, but not doesn't necessarily have to be. It's, yeah. uh, it's not Boo, Jimmy. It's a Scooby. Scooby-Doo. Scooby, Scooby-Doo. You're it's right. Scooby You're and right. It is Scooby-Doo. And they make Scooby snacks, feed the Scooby snacks Wait to the dog. Wait a second. Yeah. And they're both detectives. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. 
That's great. <laughs> I never, I didn't think of that. That's amazing. Yeah. So you just when the dog, because it has trample, you can sacrifice an artifact token, so a clue yep. or like a, a just a creature token. There's a lot of different artifact tokens out there, like mirror tokens, uh, and then you create the food token and investigate when it does da- combat damage. And so. as it gets bigger, it becomes harder to block, more likely to do combat damage, and therefore you're going to have the artifacts tokens to sack yeah. if it makes foods and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah, so this is just pumping out tokens. I think there's a lot of different ways to go about it. You could go like changeling dogs. Yep. Um, or just have a tiny be your only Scooby Doo and just just run with that. There's only one Scooby Doo. Yeah, that's right. We're okay, Jimmy. We're okay. <laughs> let's investigate. <laughs> All right. Uh okay, so let's go move on to the new cards in the deck here. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 Whoa. new cards in this deck, and then the two legendaries. So 12 new cards in the deck. Very cool. uh, one of the new cards is a card that is shared across the other pre-cons. But with different art, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Okay, so we'll start at the top here uh, alphabetically. It is armed with proof. Aha. Uh-huh. Two and a white, so three mana for an enchantment. When armed with proof enters the battlefield, investigate twice. Two clue tokens. Yep. And then it says, clues you control are equipment in addition to their other types and have equipped creature gets plus two plus oh and have equip two. Whoa. Very interesting. I kind of love this card because if you're running like a red-white equipment deck, you play armed with proof. Yeah. Maybe you're making clues other ways, but you just get two things to draw cards with later, but more importantly, you just get two equipment along with it. You might be able to come for free in a red-white equipment. Yeah. Uh, Also, I found that in clue decks, you often have a lot more clues than you have mana to crack them. Yeah. Uh, And this, or or you're like, I don't need a lot of cards. I need to deal damage. This allows you to be like, cool, I'm going to pay this mana, put it onto a creature and use that as damage because, you know, I don't need to crack 13 clues for for a card draw. Yo, stick this on tiny. Oh, yeah. There There you go. It's got trample, right? Yeah, it does. All right, next up we have Detective of the Month. Which is great. They get their picture up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the wall. Yeah. Two in the blue for a 2-3 human detective with Ascend. Haven't seen this in a bit. So if you control 10 or more permanents, you get the city's blessing for the rest of the game. And as long as you have the city's blessing, detectives you control can't be blocked. So this is actually both of the commanders are detectives. Yeah, and detectives is a big theme in uh, Murders at Karlov Manor, mm-hmm. and there are a number of de- detectives in the deck, yeah. And clue counters do count towards Ascend as well. Yep. And it says, whenever you draw your second card each turn, create a 2-2 white and blue detective creature token. Wow. So this is kind of like a do-it-all kind of card. Yeah, it does a lot. Yeah, once you just start drawing all the cards with the clues, all your detectives can't be blocked, and then now you have this swinging army and a bunch of detectives. <laughs> that are, I guess they're all Detective of the Month at that point. I really like this kind of payoff for clues because, again, clue decks are usually pretty mana hungry. You often have more clues than you have mana to crack them. Yeah. And it's way easier to justify spending your mana cracking a clue if it's like, it makes a 2-2 and draws me a card. Yeah. Two mana for a 2-2 that draws you a card. I mean, that is a pretty good magic card all on its own. Yep. So, yeah, I, this, this card's pretty sweet. Yeah, you get to just make all these little detectives. Yeah, I mean, you can't do it. It's harder to do on, like, you know your and opponent's turns, turn, yeah. but you can do it. It is possible. Then it's four mana for a 2-2 that draws you. Ristic card. study. <laughs> All right, the next one is the second card ever that has the word Gravestorm on it. Oh, that's right. So it's follow the bodies. Two and a blue for a sorcery. Gravestorm. This means when you cast this spell, copy it for each permanent put into a graveyard from the battlefield this turn. That's all permanents put into... A graveyard from the battlefield, that would count your clue tokens because Mm. they are permanents that go to your graveyard, even though they fizzle when they go. Okay. And then it says investigate. So if you've, you know, had a couple things die, maybe a board wipe got cast, this is a sorcery, so I guess you'd be the one casting it. Right. Maybe cracked a couple of clues. Gravestorm count six, seven. Yeah, six, seven, you cast this and go, I make six or seven more clues tokens. Wow. That's cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and even if it's just cracking some clues and and then playing follow the bodies to get more clues. Yeah kind of cool. It's like you didn't spend the clues at all. You just spent two mana to draw a card. Yeah. Yeah. All right, next up is Knowledge is Power. It's an enchantment for three, a white, and a blue it's an, uh, that says creatures you control get plus X plus X, where X is the number of cards you've drawn this turn. Hmm. So a little expensive at the five mana side, but I think this is actually sneaky good because again, on someone else's turn, threat of activation, you have clues up, they're swinging in at you. All of a sudden you can maybe buff your board by plus two, plus two, plus three, plus three, even just plus one, plus one can make a big difference. And it's cool because no matter what, each turn you're going to draw at least one card and that means you're going to get an anthem effect. Yeah. So on your turn, it's definitely all your creatures are at least plus one, plus one. Yeah. And yeah, you could threaten, like as long as you swing before you've cast anything, Mm -hmm. you might have four or five clues and have six mana and it's like, can I afford to block? if they're just going to be like 
crack three clues, yeah. give them all my team plus three plus three. Sometimes I might be like, can I afford not to block if they're going to do that? Yeah. yeah. And cards look like windfall with this or just like, wow, we, you're, you're going to, this is kind of like a finish the game kind of card. Yeah, it could be for sure. But you need a board state to do so. So that's the real downside. And it is five mana. Yep. That's pretty high CMC for that. Okay. The next new card is Innocuous Researcher. It's three and a green for a three, four creature centaur detective. Another detective here. It has Parlay which is an old mechanic from, like, Conspiracy. Oh, yeah. It says, whenever an innocuous researcher attacks, each player reveals the top card of their library. For each non-land card revealed this way, you investigate. Then each player draws a card. So okay. you should get about 60... Percent-ish. 65% of the time. Two to three clues, yeah. pretty much. It's two and a fraction of a clue yeah. per turn. Yeah. <laughs> per, per, oh, sorry, per time this attacks. attacks. Yeah. And then it says, at the beginning of your end step, you may untap all lands you control. Whoa. If you do, you can't cast spells until your next turn. Ah. But it does give you mana to crack clues, right? You can't you cast go. spells. Yeah, it sucks when you have like seven clues and you can't crack them, but this will basically let you chew through your clues. Which is pretty cool because you attack with it, create... Two and, a, two half and a half clues. Three clues, maybe, yeah. Yeah, and then play your normal turn, spend all your mana, pass the turn, and now you can you have the mana to crack those clues. Yeah, and this is four mana, so that it presumes you at least have two clues that maybe you can crack. It's a real downside to not be able to even bluff anything. Yeah. <laughs> much less actually do anything on people's turns, though. Yeah, so it is kind of, yeah, maybe this is like a, this is a May ability, right? So you don't have to do it. So it could be early game, I'm just trying to build my hand, I don't have to threaten the counter spell until later. And maybe you're playing cards like Thrasios in your deck. Yeah. With activated abilities. So you, you're, you're fine to untap just for that stuff anyway. That is interesting. You can actually really over bluff by being like, I have six lands, mm. two are untapped. I'm going to choose not to untap my lands. Ooh. Go. Yeah. And you're like, they got to have a counter You got to have something, yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, I guess I'm playing around that for a whole turn cycle. <laughs> That's cool. I like that. Okay. Or even if you have four lands untapped. And yeah. Have, yeah. It's like, it's like, okay, yeah. Why would they untap all of them? Like, yeah, you know. They must have something. Yeah. And there's a lot of great instants at four mana too. All right. Next up, we got Merchant of Truth. This is two white white for an angel detective. That's a two five with flying. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, investigate. And it also says, well, clues you control have exalted. So exalted is a Ooh. trigger that can be on every single clue. And it will trigger for every single instance of exalted that you have. It says whenever a creature you control attacks alone, that creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn for each instance of exalted among permanents you control. Oh boy. So you have five clue tokens. You attack with one creature, it gets plus five, plus five. Yeah. This is... Wow. So this could be a game ender for sure, especially with a commander. You know, you sneak it in. Yeah. Or maybe they don't see it coming, right? You cast this the same turn you attack. Mm. And clue decks often uh, are really good at creating clues and don't have a high opportunity to crack them all. Yeah. So you often end up with 10 plus and you're like... Eh, I'll draw a card here and there, but I'm never going to chew through these that quickly by like paying the two. Sometimes, you know, if you're an optimized deck, you have a way to sacrifice them or something. Yeah. This deck doesn't have that, but it has a way to turn it into damage, which I really like. Yeah. Or equipment. So yeah. Put oh, that yeah. on the dog. Their equipment with Exalted. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Your dog has like three <laughs> clues attached to it. It gets plus six plus so, and it's going to have all the Exalted triggers. It's like <laughs> and it and trample. trample. Yeah. <laughs> See Scooby, ya. go get them. Scooby's going in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, the next one is On the Trail. It's funny, on our notes it says On the Train. Ah, the Orient Express, another yeah. investigation. But it's not, it's On the Trail. Yeah, okay. okay. On the Trail. It's uh, one in a green for an enchantment. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. Okay. Okay. So now you're really getting paid off if you're doing the drawing on other people's turns deck. Oh, yeah. Because that's the last thing you want is a big hand size with just too many lands and you're unable to play them as fast as you're drawing them. Yeah. And often when you draw a lot of cards, you do run into a glut of lands yeah. just because you can't keep up uh, with the one per turn. You, you just end up with a lot. So yeah. I like... Turning that into ramp is very powerful. Yeah, very cool. That's cool. Next up, we have the Serene Sleuth. This is one in the white for a 2-2 human detective. When Serene Sleuth enters the battlefield, investigate. Make a clue token. At the beginning of combat on your turn, investigate for each goaded creature you control. Then each creature you control is no longer goaded. What? Yeah, so... It's goad hate? Yeah, it's goad hate. Have we ever seen anything like that before? I don't think so. And I haven't seen that much goad either. I mean, so I'd say you see goaded some form like often 
you know, in singular instances sure, yeah, yeah. in a game these days. It's very rare that all your creatures are goaded or whatever. Goat is kind of bad the more you have of it. Yeah. So a lot of people are just playing a little of it. And I don't think there are many instances where you can goad your own stuff either. It's usually That's an opponent's creature. So this is a very situational card. Maybe this is a hint that more goad is on the way, or maybe they just wanted to create some of this type of, because it's right, it's a, it's a hate bear. It's one in the white. They might two, two wa- hate bear. just want some, the, uh, they, maybe they decide there's enough goad, let's create a counter to goad, just so it exists. Yeah, just not so that it exists, that, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, just two mana for a 2-2 two, two that makes a clue token when it enters is not the worst. Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah, if you it, could blink it and, you know. So yeah, and you're in Bant, you definitely yep. have that possibility. All right, so the next one is Tangle Trove Kelp. It's five blue blue, so seven mana for a six six artifact creature clue plant. Not a not a guy plant, not a kelpie guy. Yeah, it is a <laughs> it is a clue itself. Oh, uh, interesting. Yeah. It has ward two and it says at the beginning of each combat, other clues you control become six six plant creatures in addition to their other types until end Whoa. of turn. And then it has two sacrifice uh draw a card. Sacrifice the the, the tang- tangle trove kelp. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Holy crap, turns all of your clues into six sixes. That's a win con. Co- yeah. That's going to be hard to see coming. Well, I keep saying it. Clue decks often are Have just sitting lot. there with 10 plus clues. This is definitely a way to be like, oh, yeah, that's 60 damage worth of creatures I'm attacking. Yeah. That's also a very funny way to end an investigation. <laughs> <laughs> I turned them all into Monsters, huge plants, monster yeah. plants. It's like, you didn't solve the case? Like, no, I just killed them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, lastly, we have this card that's in every single one of the Murs of at Call of Manor uh, precons, but with different art, and it's Ransom Note. I'm sure someone out there is going to decode what all these mean. But they say one mana artifact clue, so it's a clue type, and it says when Ransom Note enters the battlefield, surveil one. So that right there by itself is playable in some decks, Blink decks especially. But it's also got this, two mana sacrifice Ransom Note, choose one. One option is cloak the top card of your library. We'll talk about what that is in a second. The second is goad target creature. Oh, there you oh, go. There you go. <laughs> your Tureen Sleuth. And then the third is draw a card. So you can have the regular clue effect. You can go to creature, or you can do this thing called cloaking, which is a new mechanic in Murders at Karlov Manor. And the way Josh explained it, what I thought was great, it's basically manifest. Yep. So you can take a card. Uh, in this case, it says from the top card of your library. You take the top card of your library, put it face down on the table. That card itself has ward two on it. So if you try and target it, it will be countered unless you pay two extra mana. And then if it's a creature, you can pay the creature's mana cost to flip it over. Yeah. Oh, and we should also say it's a 2-2 two, two when it's face down. Right. Just like Manifests are. Yeah. So the difference between Cloak and Disguise or Manifest and Morph is you're cloaking another card, mm-hmm. whereas Disguise or Morph say, uh, play this, play this, this card face down. Right. Yeah. And then once they're down, a, a Morph card, you need to pay the Morph card so it says on that card to flip it up. Uh, a Cloaked card or a Manifested card you pay the mana cost of the creature to flip it back up. Mm-hmm. And if it's not a creature, it just stays down there. Yeah, and this I works. believe that's all right. I hope that's <laughs> I, what I said is true. Please double check with a judge. Uh, obviously, they're new mechanics, but I believe that's correct. Yeah, and you get a surveil one when it comes down, so you could maybe, maybe a creature on top that you then to decide to sack the clue to... Oh, that's a really good point. I didn't think about that. Yeah. You do kind of get to, to know what that top card is. So To that, draw it or to surveil it into, or to make it a, a cloaked creature. Yeah. Cool. That, that is cool. Okay, that's all the new cards from the Deep Clue C precon. Uh, we are going to go over the reprint value breakdown of the deck. We're going to talk about what the average reprint value is, what the big reprints in the deck are, what the f- you know what the full reprint value of the deck itself is. It's been up and down the last few. We mm-hmm, were mm-hmm. really excited about LCI. We were disappointed earlier in the year with things like Commander Masters. Where does Deep Clue C fall on that continuum? Well, Ooh. if you want to find out, you got to stick around because we're going to take a quick break and hear a message from our sponsors. We'll be right back. Josh, did you know that on average it takes a person about 30 days to break their New Year's resolution? That's terrible. I bet with a little bit of hard work and optimization, we could get that number down to like 15 days easy. What? No, that's... <laughs> I know you understand now that's wrong. Yes, yes, I do. Okay, anyway, if your resolution is to save money this year, you can guarantee success by just switching to Mint Mobile. Oh, yeah. For a limited time, Mint Mobile is only $15 a month for premium wireless service when you purchase a three-month plan. It's way better than signing up with a big wireless provider because Mint Mobile is never going to catch you off guard with huge monthly fees or unexpected charges. Plus, every Mint Mobile plan comes with unlimited talk and text on the nation's largest 5G network. You can even keep your old phone number and all your contacts. Which is great because my New Year's resolution was to keep in better touch with my friends. Ah, really? Nah, no. It was actually to stop eating red meat, but I've already failed. Oh, yeah, that tracks. 
say, you want to go get some Korean barbecue? Oh, yeah, and I'm inviting everyone. <laughs> <laughs> to get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash command. That's mintmobile.com slash command. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash command. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. Dang it, I cannot make this work. What are we looking at here? I just can't beat Kang the Conqueror. He's a new villain they released in Marvel Strike Force, and he uses time mastery to manipulate his opponent's speed. Shang-Chi and Captain Marvel are my best heroes, but he's too tough. He shrugs them off like they're nothing. There's your problem. You can't just rely on individual strong characters. You need to pay attention to the mechanics and the synergies. It's like an engine. All the parts have to work together. Try pairing Rogue with Gambit. Together, they can beat Kang to the punch and shut him down before time runs out. Sounds great, but I still need to unlock Rogue. Don't worry. In Marvel Strike Force, there's always another way to get the job done. What I do is pair Doctor Doom with Spider Weaver. Spider Weaver makes it hard for her team to get hit, so Doom can build up an army of Doom bots. Then bang, no more Kang. See, it's all about the strategy. Okay, so what if I use the Eternals, but I pair them with Loki? He speeds up Cersei so she can soften Kang up, and then Icarus comes in, hits like a truck. Now you're getting it. Sounds like a well-oiled machine. Okay, Kang, prepare to get wrecked. Marvel Strike Force. Click the link in the description and download it now for free. Are you guys done with my car yet? Oh, no, this engine is totaled. We beat Kang, though. What? How? He runs me over every time. And then I'm gonna flash out Illusory Ambusher. I will bolt it to draw three cards. I will sneak attack out Triskaidekafile. I'm gonna go to my upkeep and I will win the game. That was your first time playing the deck? Yeah. Well, I mean, first time in paper. I've already goldfished it like a hundred times on Architect. Their play tester is super user friendly. Playing cards just takes one click and you can mulligan, tutor, and move through your turns with the press of a key. There are simple menus with counters and copies and you can take notes on cards as you play them. Architect is the best place to browse, brew, and play test commander decks. Just go to architect.com slash command zone to get started. That's A-R-C-H-I-D-E-K-T dot com slash command zone. All right, we are back. I want to throw a card on page two. Yeah. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> it was a boomerang. Yeah, it was a boomerang. <laughs> uh, all right, we're talking about Deep Clue C, the brand new pre-con revealing all of the spicy new cards inside, as well as talking about the reprint and the reprint value. But first, we need, we need to feel, get a feel for how this deck plays. So let's dive in to the... Stats. We're underwater, so it's like... Yeah, the bubbles. What do you mean? It's like this. Stats. That's what the merfolk sound. That's right. Forgot all about that. Maybe I blocked it on my memory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to talk about the stats of this deck. First up, we have the ramp spells, and there are 14 sources of ramp in this deck. That's great. That's high. It's a lot, yeah. It's yeah. Like you're in green, so you're going to have great ramp already. Yeah, uh, I like to see that because clue decks are usually very mana hungry because uh, it, yeah. it is expensive to pay two to crack a clue. Yeah, and we saw with like on the trail, it's a way to put other lands in the play. Yep. So yeah, some interesting ways of doing it. Uh, as far as card draw, there are 11 card draw spells, and we want to note we did not include cards that make clues as part of this. So there's actually a lot more card draw in the deck because a lot of things make a thing that you can pay two mana and draw a card with. Yeah, which is like slow card draw if you think about it. So Optional card draw. So there's a ton of card draw in this deck. Yeah. Uh, there are five spells that have targeted interaction. So, that seems very low. Seems low, and you're yeah. in white, so you could add a lot more in, I think, pretty yeah, easily. Yeah, that scares me. I want that number to be way, much closer to 10. Yeah. Yeah. And take some of the ramp out instead, yeah. Uh, yeah, although I want a lot of ramp, so. True, true. I want it all, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> you can have it all, Josh. It's magic. <laughs> uh, and there are three board wipes in the deck. Okay. Seems fine. Yep, seems fine. Uh, 37 lands, which seems fine as well. That's good, yep. And you're probably going to be drawing a lot, so you're never really in risk of like not drawing your, your lands, I think, in yep. this deck. Okay, let's talk about the deck-specific stats as far as the strategies uh, that it has going on. And, and this one is not a big question mark as far as what it wants to do. It has 17 cards that make clues. Oh, wow. Wait, that's a lot. Yeah, when you combine that with the card draw, there's almost 30 card draw sources. There, that's a lot of yeah. the deck, which is good. Yeah. There are 18 clue payoffs. Okay, so sacrifice a clue, draw your second card for turn is a clue payoff. Yep. What do you get from that? 18, that's a decent amount too. Yep. There are nine cards that just give you payoffs for just drawing cards in general. Yep. So again, that kind of includes what I just talked about. Yep. And then there are nine creature token creating cards. Mm, okay. So that's a weird sub theme and might be a place that you'd look to make cuts when you're adding uh, yeah. probably more targeted interaction. <laughs> yeah, or if you're playing Sophia as the dog of detective, she that's cares true. about artifact tokens. So there's some stuff there. 
Okay, let's talk about the overall contents of the deck. So taking a broad look back, there are 12 new cards, which we talked about. There is one main set card, which is technically a reprint, but mm-hmm. is from Murders at Karlov Manor, the main set. 74 reprints total in the deck and 14 basic lands. Okay. So that's a high number of reprints. We usually see... A yeah. little bit fewer. I think they've been higher on basic lands in the past. Oh, that's a lot right. of times there'd be oh, 20 okay. basic lands, which we've called out many times in the past. There doesn't need to be this many basic lands. Let's move a few of those slots into non-basics and give us a chance for some land reprints. And it feels like they kind of did that a little bit, which I like. And it's a three-color deck, so it necessitates a little bit more too. Yeah, so we're going to move on, having said that, to the next category or the next section, which is reprint value. Yeah, and of course, when we talk about reprint value, we are doing so deciding the reprint value at the time of the recording. So the deck hasn't been previewed yet. Prices have not been able to fluctuate or be based on new things that have come out between the time we record this and the time the episode's released. Yep. And it does not take into account the new cards because we have no idea what those are going to be priced at. So this is the reprint value, and as soon as we start naming the reprints, their value is going to drop because people will then know, oh, that's getting reprinted in a Commander product, and therefore it's going to have more supply. And can't hold the price it did before now that more supply is in the market. The good news is uh, we do this and have done this for years, so we can still compare this to the same point in time for pre con in the past and just see how this sort of stacks, stacks up. up. Yeah. yeah. One another thing to keep in mind is that this deck is currently pre-ordering for around $45-50, which is on the high end for commander decks, not counting commander masters, which mm-hmm. is nuts. Um but for normal commander precons, that's definitely uh, a bit higher. A bit higher than we've seen in the past. Not a lot, maybe five bucks higher than we've seen for the last year or so. so yeah. Just something that came to mind. Um, all right. So set the stage here. Let's go through the average precon reprint value of the last few sets here, Jimmy. Yep. So Lord of the Rings, one of the biggest sets of last year, the average reprint value of the precons, I think there were five total or four maybe. Four. Uh, it was $126.44. Yep. Wilds of Eldraine came in a bit lower at $112.90. Doctor Who was at $110.17. Now, keep in mind, there were a ton of new cards in Doctor Who as well, so we yep. didn't know the value of those. Lost Caverns of Ixalan was a bit of a heavy hitter. It came in at $149.25, almost $150. Bucks. Which is very high. I, I think in the past, we're always happy if it's 120 or more, and yeah. that's the average between the four decks. 150 was like, our we're eyes like, were like, what the heck? What the heck? Yeah, is this a trend, or is this just a blip on the radar? And we'll see, because our eyes are about to get even wider yep. with Deep Clue C. Josh, you want to announce it? It's a big one. Yeah, so the average, or sorry, the reprint value we've calculated for Deep Clue C is... One hundred and eighty nine dollars and seventy five cents. That is almost two hundred dollars. Yeah, that's it. What? I'd have to double check to make sure, but I think it might be the highest number we've ever seen for the reprint value. Yeah, and again, this is not for all. It's not the average of the MKM decks. This is just deep clue C. Yeah. So we don't know what the other ones are. But, but like, wow, what? <laughs> well, like, what the heck? We when we saw the number, I was like, we made a mistake. Let's recalculate. Yeah, like, what happened? Nope. And nope, that is the reprint value. It's absurdly high. I mean... Yeah, it's it's like almost twice as much as some of the other ones. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. I mean, I, almost just from that, you're like, just buy it. Like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, we're going to talk about some of the specifics and stuff in there, but th- it is very good. So, very happy to see this. Um, thank you, Wizard of the Coast, for, you know... Well, again, we've had two in a row here, so I don't know that we can say that it's a trend, but yeah. it is definitely seems to be pointed in the right direction. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's a lot of factors at play deciding what goes into the deck. So whoever is doing it, if this is a trend that you're going to keep up, I think this is something that's going to be great for the player base. I think it's probably Gavin. Yeah, thanks, Gavin. Thanks, Gavin. I like that. I just randomly thanking Gavin. Yeah, well, we got we we blame Gavin sometimes too. So I feel that's <laughs> only fair. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you get a little bit of good and a little bit of bad. Uh, we also do this thing now called bang for your buck. So we take the shelf price and then we divide it basically, and to understand what you're getting for each one dollar you spend on the precom, what you're going to get in reprint value overall. Yeah. this is a metric that Rachel came up with, and it's, it's really sort of great. like yeah, yeah, how much for every dollar you spend. How much dollar worth of value are you getting back when you buy this precon? Lord of the Rings was two fifty three. Mm-hmm. Wild of Eldrin was two dollars and eighty two cents. Doctor Who was two dollars and twenty cents. Lost Caverns of Ixalan was three dollars and seventy three cents. And Deep Clue C is four dollars and twenty two cents for every dollar you spend. That is just straight up almost twice as much as the Doctor Who bang for your buck. Yeah, and you're getting four times your value back. Yeah, like very very good. So why is that? Well, let's talk about the notable reprints in this deck, and uh, 
we always talk about the cards that are $5 or more. That's sort of what we list as the highlights because obviously we're not going to mm-hmm. highlight every single card. We've never seen a list this long. Yeah. For, it used to be like not even that long ago, maybe like two la- cards above yeah, 5 bucks. Yeah, sometimes there would be less than four cards above $5 yeah. in a deck. And a lot of times they were like three $5 cards and a $9 card. Yeah. Watch this. This is nuts. There are 11 cards over $5 and not by a small amount. There by- are five over $10. There's one over... There's- there's one over $20 and one that basically is 20 This is yeah. great. So the first up is Benny Brax Zoologist, which makes sense. This is a card that is great in mono white. Yep. Uh, at the beginning of each end step, if you create the token this turn, draw a card. Just perfect for this deck. It was $21. Going to get you all those to draw two cards a turn cards going. Yep. The next card was 1950. It's Adrix and Nev Twin Casters. This is the card that is a doubling season. Well, it's a parallel lives for on tokens, a creature. Yeah. Yep. Doubles your to- the amount of tokens you get. And has yep. ward. Yep. Uh, and then here's the big baddie, Chulane Teller of Tales, was at $16 still. Just one of the best Bant commanders ever because it kind of does everything. Yep. Uh, the next one is our friend Jacob Bertrand's favorite. It's Coma Cosmic. Most serpent. Wow, we. Yep, this was a sixteen. Do- oh, sorry. Yep, sixteen dollar card as well. This is the one that does everything. I won't read it. Yeah, though. It does everything. <laughs> you got to kill it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you got Alondra the Sky Dreamer, which was a fourteen dollar card. Yep. Cares about drawing two cards a turn, and then it makes drakes. Yep. Uh, okay, so those were all the cards that were over ten dollars. Wow. Five of them, Jeez. and now the next card was nine dollars. Uh, again, before I, uh, I'm about to say its name, it was $9. It's about <laughs> to go down. It's Farewell, which yeah. is the sort of very flexible board wipe in white and has kind of become the new default. Is it the best board wipe in white? Uh, it's close. Yeah, it's really, really good. That's yeah. all I know. Exiling stuff is really where it, it shines. Yep. Uh, next up at $7.50, it's Finale of Revelation. So this is just one of those draw X cards. And if you make X a huge number, you get a cool extra special ability, which I won't read for now. The next card, I was actually uh, surprised that it was this low. It was only seven dollars. Mm. I thought it would be higher because I. It's just so. This good. card's insane. Yeah, it's Academy Manufacturer. Oh, so this is good. the one that if you would make a clue, food, or treasure, you make all three of those things instead. Oh, this goes so well, with Sophia Dog. Oh, it's so good. That is just nuts. <laughs> uh, and then we have Kappa Cannoneer, which I believe is like a modern card, which is why it's up there. Yep. Uh, and and the, it was five fifty. Yeah, and of course you can improvise it out, and then whenever an artifact ETBs, you put a one one counter on it and it can't be blocked this turn and it has ward four yeah that's un- that's the reason it's uh in modern i think it's yeah. ward four is no one you improvise it out you and don't it's even have to four mana <laughs> yeah, <in modern>. exactly. <laughs> yeah the game's over by the time you got four mana. <laughs> yeah uh the next one is hydroid crassus and it was 550 before mm. uh before just now crassus or crasis i think it's crasis but Crassus works too. It sounds a little more crass when you Crassus say it that sounds way. Roman. Yeah. Oh yeah. Good point. And then last up as a five dollar card, it's Teferi's Ageless Insight. Oh, I love this card. So great card. Yeah. If you draw a card except for the first one, you draw in uh, each of your draw steps, you draw two cards instead. Pay two, crack a clue, draw two. Whoa! Now that is a rate that is worthy. That's sure. uh, yeah. I like that a lot. Okay, so those are all the cards that were worth $5 or more. Wow. Again, there were 11 of them. Again, the reprint value in this deck is very, very good. And I, and I feel. Every single one of the cards we just mentioned go into other decks. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of cards That's in there that are not too. just like, oh, this is um, a high price because it's just old and hasn't reprinted in a while. Yeah, yeah, all yeah. of them are real cards in real decks that C play. We've all seen them across the table and grown, mm-hmm. and their their value is because uh, you know they're good cards. They're so, playable. Yeah, that's sure. really exciting. And it's nice to sit here and be able to sort of gush about how good the reprint value is. Yeah, it does it's not fun for us to sit here and be like, well, it's kind of a stinker cuz you know, we've been doing this for 9 years now. Yeah. We like to get excited about things. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. It's like, oh, sweet, this one's good. Yeah, nice. This one you can just with open arms be like, yep, give me that thing. Give me it. Bring it yeah, in. Bring I'm it. Fine. <laughs> I want to build a clue deck. I'm going to hit you with a dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh that's going to do it for the sort of analysis and everything, we are going to now move on to the section where we just list off the remainder of the cards that we haven't talked about yet that are in this deck so you can get a look at all of them. I don't believe anything has new art, but if it does, you'll see it. As um, the art on yep. the screen, yep. Okay, so here we go. We're going to go in alphabetical order. Aerial Extortionist. Hooray. Hooray. Uh, Arcane Signet. Oh, yeah. Big Easy. surprise. There's going to be some lands in this list as well. Azorius Chancery. I love bounce lands, so oh, yeah. I like seeing it. Azorius Signet. Very good. There's some of that 14 ramp. Canopy Vista. Nice. Now, this is a great land to reprint. Yep. Command Tower, of course. Confirm Suspicions in Oldie. Disorder in the Court. Okay. Erdwall Illuminator. Yep. Clue Synergy for sure. Exotic Orchard. Ooh. 
Essex Fractal Bloom. Oh, I skipped way ahead, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. Yep, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, ethereal Investigator. Ah, very good. An exotic would come after Ethereal. I know how yeah, alphabetizing, alphabetizing works. Yeah, 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 my bad. The editors right. are like, what is... Oh, sound the alarm. <laughs> next up, we got Fumigate. So that's one of the three board wipes in the deck. Yep. Uh, next is Graph Mole. Which oh, I haven't is, seen that card in a while. It's great in draft. I remember if you want to gain some life while cracking your clues, this is the way go. to go. Yep. Uh, Hornet Queen, making oh, yeah. tokens all over the place. Idol of Oblivion. Oh, pretty good when you're making pretty clue good. tokens, yeah. Uh, speaking of which. Oh, Inspiring Statuary. Woo. That is that is one of the best cards in the deck straight up. Yeah, tap your clues for mana. Is that good? Yeah, pretty good. Uh, after that is Irrigated Farmland. Okay, another land. And then we got Jorayal Mwan Voli Recluse. Oh, yeah, so a makes Jimmy a favorite. Tutus. Yeah, I like that card. Uh, Junk Winder is the next card. Cool. Killer Service. Great <laughs> name for a card. Yep. That was like I, a penna, I think, right? Yeah. Yep. After that is Cross and Verge. Classic. We are seeing a lot of... Uh, Lands. Yeah, mid-tier, but still good land rep- reprints. I like that. Yeah, Lonely Sandbar, another land that, again, goes into a lot of decks. Yep, after that is Lawness, Cryptozoologist. Oh, nice. And then we got Magnifying Glass, which is uh, just okay, but it's Mana Rock. Yeah, likes clues, you know. A card you could definitely cut, I think. <laughs> yeah, um, here's a win con with your clues, Mechanized Production. Ooh, from Kaladesh, yep. yeah. If you get enough clues, you guys, this, you are, you know, they're going to either kill you or you're going to win. Yep, uh, this one rewards you for drawing cards. It's Nadir Kr- Racken. Oh, that's a really good payoff yeah. for sure. After that is Nettle Cyst. Oh, this is a, a win condition too. This is another Jimmy favorite. Plus 17, plus 17 creature. <laughs> uh, ongoing Investigation from the original clue set. Yep. After that is Organic Extinction. Mm. Path of Ancestry. Great land. Yep. And then another good uh, have land, Prairie Stream. Yeah, I want to have it. Psychosis Crawler. Yep. I love it. Deal some damage as I draw some cards. That's good. Reliquary Tower is okay. next. Yep. Very good. A favorite. Scattered Groves. Wow, tons of land. Lands. Tons of good lands, yeah. yeah. Next is Search the Premises. Okay, more clue stuff. Seaside Citadel, the original Tri-Land. Secluded Step is the next one. Selesnia Sanctuary. Another Bounce Land. And then is another Parlay card, Selvala Explorer Return. Yeah, both Parlay cards in here now. I like Parlay a lot because you get an advantage, but everybody at the table draws, so you progress the game. Nobody gets yeah. stuck. Yeah, yeah, and people like it, too. They're not going to get rid of your Parlay card, right? Yeah, draw me some cards. Help me in my land drops, and everybody yeah. has fun. Uh, I, I really need to play more parlay against you, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would appreciate it, for sure. <laughs> Prepare to lose more. <laughs> Shimmer Dragon. This is great. Just tap your clues to draw cards. That's great. Super good, yeah. After this is the Simic Growth Chamber, another bounce land. So all three uh, bounce lands. Yeah, we might have too many bounce lands yeah, at this point. Yeah. <laughs> I like them, but maybe just two. I guess they're good with the original commander that says you have no maximum hand size. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Simic Signet. Classic. Good. Uh, after that is Sky Cloud Expanse. After that is Soul Ring. Duh. There it is. After that is Spire of Industry. Another land. Yep. And another land, Sungrass Prairie. After that is one of the most played cards in all of the format. It's Swords to Plowshares. Uh, notably, no path to exile, so I'm sure you could find a card here to replace for that. These next three, you should just read them together. Okay, Talisman of Curiosity, Talisman of Progress, and Talisman of Unity. That's nice. Yeah, all three talismans. Again, this deck seems like it's really good for disassembling, too. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's got a lot of key pieces you'll use You do these next three together. Yeah, okay. It's Temple of Enlightenment, Temple of Mystery, Temple of Plenty. So all the Scrylands in this three color. What is this, a wedge? Is this a shard? I don't know. Uh, I think it's a shard. Maybe it's a wedge. Who knows? It's a shard. Someone out there It's from Alara. It's banned. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's banned, yeah. Um, And then we have Temple of the False God to complete the temple cycle, I guess. (laughs) Yeah. Not sure I love three bounce lands and a temple in the same deck. Yeah, right. Uh, Next is Tezzeret, Betrayer of Flesh. Ah. So Planeswalker thrown in there. Nice. Thought Monitor, which is a great, easy card to cast when you have all those tokens out. Yep. A card that makes clues and likes when you have clues is Tireless Tracker. Oh, this card's really good in this yep. deck, yeah. Tranquil Thicket, another land. Nice. Uh, Uvenvald Mysteries is next up, another clue synergy card. Yep, good build around. Yep. Wave Sifter, a uh, green-blue little flying guy. Then it's Whirler Rogue, which is ah, interesting. In tap clue. two artifacts, make, make a creature something unblockable. unblockable yeah. Especially for that first commander, it's really, really big. Really good with Scooby. Yeah, Scooby really good. Uh, even good with Morska, because oh, it's, it's huge. Yep. And then Wilderness Reclamation, which is classic. Yeah. Untap your lands, crack it for clues instead. I like that one because it doesn't say, hey, you can't cast yeah. spells. <laughs> you can still cast spells, but you totally. can also crack clues. Yeah, I like that. Yep. And then the basics in the deck, there are five force, six islands, and three planes. Okay. All right, so that does it for all of the cards in the deck. You will now be able to build the whole deck from memory, should you be that talented. <laughs> wow. Uh, but yeah, all the regular cards are the reprints, the ten, no, the 12 new cards that yep. are new cards, and then the two new commanders as well. So, Jimmy, what do you think about the deck? 
I'm actually really interested in this deck. I already have like a Paco and Howden deck and it's got a dog that beats people down. So yeah. kind of part of me is like, do I need to build another deck where the dog beats people down? <laughs> I feel like that could just be your thing. Yeah, it could be my thing. <laughs> so maybe it's my thing. I would love to do that. Um, so yeah, Sophia Doggy Detective, I think is kind of calling my name here. I feel like that deck will need a decent amount of changes. Morska feels yes, for uh, sure. more out of the box for this deck. Yeah, I'm, I'll be interested to see. The curve of this deck feels a little bit high for me and clues are very um, mana hungry. So, mm-hmm. you know, in a clue deck, I would feel like I want more low CMC stuff because once I get to a lot of mana, I can use that mana by cracking clues. Yeah. Um, so I'll be interested to see how it plays out. But clues are very powerful because they guarantee you always have something to do. You won't run out of gas. Yeah. And uh, those that's how I like to play the game. I never like to be sitting there where I can't do anything. Maybe I'll lose. Maybe I'll be always slow. But At least I have options. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I can yeah. cast things. I'm doing stuff. And yeah. this deck feels like you're guaranteed to do to be mo- to be doing stuff. Yeah, and I like Bant decks that aren't just Flicker, that yeah. aren't just Enchantment, Enchantress decks. So it's always cool when you take a color combination and then go like, let's make it a clue-themed deck or yeah. an artifact token-based deck, and the commander can really support the growth of it in those different ways. Yeah, that's true, actually. I like that a lot. Yeah. Okay, to the listeners, what do you think about this new Deep Clue C deck? Are you excited about it? What new cards are you going to take out and slot, and they're going to slot perfectly into the current decks Ooh, that you already have? there's yeah. a lot. Yeah, I'm interested to see, especially with those new cards. And also let us know if you like the other other MKM pre-cons. There's three other ones. Uh, they'll be previewed around the web from other content creators. Yep. Uh, and, you know, our pre-cons are some of my favorite parts of the year because they're just, it's like a pre-packaged experience, great way to get new people into the game. Um, and they're just fun. And they're really fun when they're $190 worth of value. Yeah. <laughs> that's the unsaid truth of this no, one. Uh, For sure. Was, and you know what? Go it was get said, that value it was said, right I now. said it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can get that value right now by going to cardcame.com slash command. Be the first, in fact, because you already went the first time we said cardcame.com slash command. Right. And now you're going to go this time when we say cardcame.com yeah, slash command. <laughs> uh, not only can you get the pre-con there, you can upgrade your deck on the spot. You can copy and paste in the deck list. There's even buyback programs that Card Kingdom has. In fact, I think there's going to be something that if you go on that website and just look around I guarantee you there's something on there that you didn't realize Card Kingdom did and that's one of the benefits they've been around the game for a long time they have a huge inventory they ship everything in one package we trust them to get us the cards we need when we need them for shows like Game Nights Live and for our production so cardkingdom.com slash command is absolutely the best place to go and not only that you're supporting this show while you do so to get more great content like this and so that we can keep plugging these cool cards into your consciousness and making you a better magic player and then once you get your hands on this deck there is a lot of value in it so you want to make sure you protect the cards to make sure they stay in good condition retain their value ultra pro is the game accessories company that jimmy myself many people at the command zone trust our own collections to if you go to ultrapro.com slash command you can pick up sleeves deck boxes dice mm. play mats wall scrolls if you if you want your battlefield to look awesome if you want your game pieces to be protected ultrapro.com slash command is the best place to go and like we mentioned earlier they also all, all very often have really, really good deals on discounts on things. So sometimes you'll just go to their website and they've just got binders, you know, at 40% off or something. And it it really is a good reason to sign up for their newsletter so that they they can notify you when things like that happen. But it's also just a good place to check. I check it like once a week, honestly. Yeah. Just to see, like, is there anything just way marked down and I can just pick up a few of it? Because we're magic players. We always always need sleeves. We're always filling up binders. You know, we're always building new decks and need new deck boxes. So yeah, ultrarow.com slash command. And of course, don't worry. Because we're going to get more cool Game Night Style coming your way this year. Starting off with Magic Con Chicago, That's February right. 23rd. Uh, that Friday is when the show will be. But Magic Con runs the whole weekend. Josh and I will be there. We'll be signing cards, saying hi to people, taking pictures, uh, doing meet and greets. And just, it's a really cool experience. So if you've never gone to a Magic Con before, you're in that Midwest area, or you want to fly into Chicago in the winter, which is cool, good for you. <laughs> you're brave. You're brave. Yeah. And you're going to be really cool because you're making it to Game Nights Live on that Friday. Duh. Jimmy, when we go, we have to get better jackets than oh, these jackets. Oh, yeah, this is so Don't do thin. anything in Chicago. When we were in Philly last year, I was yeah. like, I was not prepared. <laughs> I needed to bring way more clothing yeah. to this. Winter in L.A. doesn't prepare you for no. winter, like real winter. Real winter, yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, we've been saying, um, you know, show up Friday if you can for the show, but that's a good point. We will be there the entire weekend. Prof will be there for most of the weekend. So, you know, Rachel's going to be there for, you know, most of the weekend. We'll be at the con playing mm-hmm. games and stuff like that. So make it for Friday if you can. But even if you can't, still come out for Saturday and Sunday. you got a good chance of seeing us. Uh, we'll be posting on our socials and talking about it here uh, when our meet and greet signings and everything are. So pay attention for that and follow yeah. us on socials if you want to catch yeah. up to us. And, everything. and you might meet some of the other commands on team while you're out yeah, here. Yeah, for sure. It's a a lot of them will be there. Yeah. yeah. Okay, everybody. Uh, before we go, let's thank our huge and amazing team here at the Command Zone. Damon Lenz, Eric Lem, Megan Yip. 
Gaurav Galati, Jordan Pridgen, Jamie Block, Arthur Meadowcroft, Manson Lung, Josh Murphy, Jake Boss, Sam Waldo, Sam Waldo, <laughs> Evan Limberger, Katie Cole, Mitch Trafford, and of course, Rachel, Rachel Weeks. Weeks. All, All right. right, everyone. Thanks so much. Get out there, crack some clues, and we will see you next time. Peace. Bye bye. Yeah. For your attention. For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs>